Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This episode, we'll deal with the virtue of justice and two fruits of the spirit related to it, peace and goodness. Now, we've already dealt somewhat with goodness back in episodes 19 and 20, but to recap, for a person to possess goodness means that they're not only performing the functions they were designed to perform, but they also have some similarities to God, honesty, charity, virtuousness, etc. Now, peace. The problem with the word peace is that, again, there are definitions of the word which aren't meant by the fruit of the spirit, peace. However, I don't really think it will take long to list them, since as far as I can tell, there are only, only two common mistakes here. The first mistaken idea of peace is lack of fighting. The second mistaken idea of peace is concordance, or mutual agreement. Let's deal with the first mistake first. Peace is not merely a lack of fighting, at least not the kind of peace that Jesus intended. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. John 14:27. So, Jesus does not give the same kind of peace that the world gives. What kind of peace does he give? Well, do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. Luke 12:51. Jesus says that his peace will bring division, dividing people from one another. However, the book of Isaiah goes into this in a little more detail. Peace, peace to the far and to the near, says the Lord, and I will heal him. But the wicked are like the tossing sea, for it cannot rest, and its waters toss up mire and dirt. There is no peace, says my God, for the wicked. Isaiah 57, 19-21 No peace for the wicked. And yet, we all know that evil people can live their lives without ever taking a weapon and actually killing someone with it. So peace can't be the same thing as non-conflict. Furthermore, evildoers often gather together to protect themselves against justice and collaborate with one another, forming agreements without fighting. However, if there isn't any peace for the wicked, this proves that neither forming agreements, nor collaborating, nor living without attacking one another have anything to do with peace. Peace, in the Christian sense, doesn't refer to a mere series of agreements or some kind of political or social lack of conflict. It refers to an internal disposition of the soul, a restfulness and satisfaction that can only come from knowing you've done the will of God. Because of this, the Catholic Church teaches that the real definition of peace is this, being in conformity with God's will. However, if you wanted to, I'll bet you could claim that peace is a mutual agreement of all people present to work towards the same cause. However, since God is always present and his will is always the same, trying to make peace without taking God's will into consideration would be a wasted effort. It wouldn't be real peace unless you agreed with God's truth. Now, justice. An unjust man is an abomination to the righteous, but he whose way is straight is an abomination to the wicked. Proverbs 29:27. This implies that the virtue of justice is about having a straight path, or consistently doing the right and honest thing. But keep the law and the commandments, and be merciful and just, so that it may be well with you. Tobit 14.9 This verse, on the other hand, says very clearly that being just is about doing right and keeping the commandments of God. Now, here's the reason I lump these three together. Goodness is about being more like God. Peace is about doing the will of God. Justice is about keeping the commandments of God. All of them can be summarized with the phrase, serve God in the way that he wants to be served. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.